Right, good evening everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. So, uh, yes, first of all, just to check and make sure you can all hear me. I'm never quite 100% sure when starting these live streams when exactly they start. So, uh, if someone can just confirm in the chat that uh, this is all live, I'd hate to go rambling on and realise that it's not switched on or something like that. So, um, good, good. Yay from Melanie. Does that mean you can hear me? Hopefully it does. Pretty sure there's a slight delay, so I'm never sure. Yes, great. Good, good. Thanks, Tom, and good to see you again. And Stuart XRP, Neek, right? Okay, good. W. Bullman's, some new new names here and some old names. It's good. So thank you, everybody, for coming back, and thank you to uh, new people joining. So yes, uh, yesterday, uh, sorry, last week, unfortunately, there wasn't a show because um, I was not uh, not feeling very well. But uh, back again this week, and we're going to be talking about uh, coil and web monetization in general. So this is a a little bit of a hot topic, I would say this uh, this week because there's been quite a flurry around coil with it uh, going live with some early adopters. Uh, unfortunately, I've not got an invite code myself yet. I did try and give them a bit of a unsubtle hint on Twitter, but uh, unfortunately, I haven't quite got one yet myself. But uh, that's not going to stop me talking about it because this is really, 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 I think, very exciting. Now, web monetization is a very general thing, um, and web monetization and coil themselves actually are not directly related to XRP. You can use them with any cryptocurrency or even potentially any fiat currency. This is the whole beauty of it. However, as most of you will probably be XRP supporters, as of myself, I'm going to talk about XRP. And I think XRP is probably one of the most suitable cryptocurrencies to use uh, with this. But actually, it's not directly related to XRP. So anybody on this uh, channel on the show that is not particularly interested in XRP, please stay tuned because, as I said, the beauty of this is it works with any cryptocurrency or potentially any fiat currency as well. So um, what are we talking about with COIL? What are we talking about with web monetization? So uh, let's probably start here. So web monetization is a standard and it's a draft standard that uh, so on the internet there are these standards called RFCs and RFC stands for request for comment and basically there's a number of these RFCs and they cover all the kind of standards that are used on the internet so there will be an RFC so one of the you know early ones um, there'll be an RFC for HTTP the hypertext transport protocol or hypertext transfer protocol that is that is what your web browser uses to communicate and these these protocols are extremely technical um, in terms of what they what they cover or can be extremely technical, um, but they they kind of determine and 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 talk about the way in which two things will communicate. So this this page here HTTP RFC talks about what your web browser should send to a web server and what a web server should send back. So that's that's why you can have a web browser from uh, Firefox or web browser from Chrome or for, or Microsoft's uh, Internet Explorer or Edge, and it can communicate with a web server regardless of whether it's uh, you know who the, who made the web server or who made the web browser, because they communicate using this common protocol. And as you can see, this is a very lengthy protocol, and um, they're they're updated over time and they're superseded. So there's another one of these that'll cover uh, the protocol that your email client uses. There'll be one that, 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 that covers, um, uh, you know, all sorts of aspects of how the Internet communicates. And there's there's some there's some funny ones as well. There's been some various ones over April Fool, Fool's Day ones. So there's an RFC for um, uh, IP over Pigeon, if I remember rightly. Um, yeah, IP over Avian Carrier. Now, this was, I think, an April Fool's Day one a while back. Uh, which talked about how um, you can actually transfer uh, uh, internet traffic using 
carrier pigeons and was 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 written in the standard of a of an RFC um, probably a Monty Python reference in there as well with regards to unladen swallows um, but anyway so there's some of these that are, that are that are kind of jokey there's some of these that are very serious and that sort of underpin the whole way in which web browsers work why am I talking about this the reason I'm talking about this is because web monetization is a standard it's an RFC standard it's part of ILP the internet uh, the interledger protocol which is another protocol related to this and uh, stream which is again a, an, another protocol related to this now these set of protocols are all things that uh, people within uh, ripple specifically have been involved in but they're open standards that have been developed in conjunction with what is called the uh, the W3C. So the W3C is the, the World Wide Web Consortium, and they are the, uh, for want of a better word, the sort of governing body for what happens with standards online. So within this, there are various sort of groups here, and one of them is the one to do with payments. And it's the Payments Working Group, uh, and you see they have various meetups uh, to discuss stuff. So the next one will be in October in Lyon. Um, and they'll be talking about the payment request handler, or the payment request API, the payment handler API, um, you know, participation from all sorts of people, Airbnb, Alibaba, American Express, uh, Coil, great, Coil are there, uh, but people like Apple, Microsoft, Mozilla in here um, talking about this. So these are open standards that are developed in conjunction with a whole load of players, web browser manufacturers, um, big websites, industry players, um, you know, here's 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 uh, um, you know a photo of uh, one of the, one of the meetups in Singapore in May, and there's people whose names in the XRP community you might you know uh, have, have heard of Adrian Hope Bailey, who's part of Ripple. And um, there's Stefan Thomas as well, no doubt, that's part of this. Now, Stefan Thomas was one of the guys uh, that went off and started, co-founded this company, Coil. So basically, they work together to, to create these, these open standards that everybody can use. And the idea being is that if you want to be able to have some way of monetizing the Internet, it's got to be something that is widely adopted, not something that is just proprietary, to one particular vendor or one particular browser. You don't want to have to download a specific web browser to do this or work with a specific website or a specific credit card company or whatever. You know, PayPal could come out with this or Microsoft could come out with this, but then you'd probably be restricted to paying via PayPal or via um, Microsoft, which is not ideal. You want it to be as broad as adoption as possible so that anybody can implement it on whatever browser or whatever. So that's why this, these are standards that are being you know, run through the W3C. Um, and so there's the, the, the uh, web monetization one, uh, stream, and ILP that are all parts of this. So what do, they, what do they do? What is this all about? So ILP, the Interledger Protocol, is a protocol that defines or there's a mechanism for connecting different ledgers together. So you could connect, you could send something from Bitcoin to XRP or something from XRP to US to a US dollar bank account. This is actually the technology that underpins Ripple's X current system. So when people talk about Ripple have 200 banking partners and they're doing live payments from uh, wherever the Netherlands to Canada or whatever it is, that's between two banks. That's Ripple's X current protocol and that uses ILP. And ILP is a protocol to link multiple ledgers together and they can be traditional bank ledgers or they could be cryptocurrency ledgers they did a demo at a, at a meetup where i think they went across something like seven different ledgers so they sent some bitcoin and it got converted to ethereum it got converted to xrp it got converted to something else to something else to something else and came out out the other end why is that important that is important because that gives you the kind of the the universality underneath it it means that you could use any currency and if there's a mechanism, if there's a, a connector between those currencies, then it will find a way and route it. So you can say, I want to be paid in Bitcoin, and somebody can turn up your site and say, well, I've got US dollars, or I've got XRP. And it should be able to find a way through the network and say, okay, we convert the XRP via this gateway to Bitcoin, 
and deliver it to the end user in Bitcoin. So that's what ILP is underneath it. That's a mechanism for doing that. Stream is a protocol that allows you to send both money and data over the same channel. So this is, this is really quite interesting. So what this means is that when you send a, a packet of data, so on the internet, data is split up into individual packets um, and each packet is sent. So one particular web page might be split up into lots of little different packets and each one is sent one at a time. So this is packet one, then packet two, then packet three. If packet four gets lost and packet five turns up, then it'll say, wait a minute, we've had three, then five, we're missing four, and so four will get resent, and it deals with all of that. Um, the network that you use for Wi-Fi would have a different packet size than possibly the network that's connected via an Ethernet cable, and that's because the different technologies have different packet sizes um, due to the underlying nature of how they work. So uh, the data is split into packets, and routers will reassemble the packets together and, on, and split them up into different sizes and send them over the network. Stream allows you to then, with those packets of data, also add money. So you can have a, a, a mechanism which you say, you know, hey, hi, how are you doing? But at the same time, here's a little bit of money. So you can send money and data at the same time or going in opposite directions. So here's a picture of a cat and in the other direction, here's some payment for that picture of a cat, right? And these are tiny, tiny, minuscule payments you can send bit by bit by bit. Um, and so this, this protocol defines things like exchange rates between the different uh, packets, how the, how the connections are set up and torn down, um, you know, encryption, all sorts of bits and pieces about, you know, the definition of a packet. So that sets the standard for how payments made. And then web monetization is one of the protocols that will be used in the web browser to allow a uh, webmaster or owner of content to be paid by a user when they visit the site. And web monetization is intended for small little streaming micropayments. There are some other um, uh, protocols as well uh, that are mentioned, for instance, in here. So there's one called um, the uh, uh, payment request API. And again, this is another one that um, Ripple have been heavily, you know, people from Ripple have been heavily involved in. So the payment request API is the kind of thing that replaces the conventional checkout dialogue at the end of a, uh, end of a, a shopping process. So you go to a web page, you say, I want to buy some socks, it adds those into a basket. You go through, I want to buy some a t shirt as well, adds that to a basket. I want to check out. You go to the checkout, and at the end, it says, How do you want to pay? And you say, Credit card. This is my credit card number. Uh, this is the, the verification number, etc. etc. At the moment, every um, website has to effectively craft that as a form that is displayed. And as far as the web browser is concerned, it's just any other form. It just happens to contain your payment information. And it's up to the web server to then deal with that and process it. The payment request API means that your web browser will be able to actually say, um, I need to get payment from the user. So the website will say, hey, there's a socks and a t-shirt and the total is £23.50, pay me. And the web browser then will say, how do we pay this vendor £23.50? Ah, they've got some wallet software on their computer, so let's use that. Or they've got some cryptocurrency, so let's use that. Or let's redirect them to PayPal and allow them to pay that way. So as you can see, a whole series of standards, open standards, um, that are being developed in conjunction with the, as, as part of the, the web payments group, the W3C. A lot of people have been involved with this, including a lot of the key people within Ripple and the XRP community. And that's kind of a key point. Whilst a lot of people have been quibbling over how you know, XRP versus Bitcoin versus Ethereum versus Digibyte versus Monero. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, the people at Ripple have been very heavily involved in a lot of these working groups going, how are we going to actually pay for things online in five years' time, in three years' time, in ten years' time, um, and, and, and work out the standards we need? So uh, that's why one of the reasons why XRP is very suited to this, because XRP is actually very fast, it's very cheap, so it's actually very good to be used for this. So, um, Coil. Coil is a company that was started then by some of the people 
who um, for, from Ripple. So Stefan Thomas, for instance, um, one of the co-founders. And the idea behind Coil is to allow a, a, a visitor to a site to make a donation to that site when they hit that site. So how does this work? You know, because one of the things people be worried about is, well, if my browser is continually sending stuff to, to, a, to a site, what happens if I leave it, walk away, get a coffee? Does it still pay it? Do I come back and find myself bankrupt because some you know, nefarious websites decide to charge me lots of money? No, that, and, and, and that's what Coil takes care of. So the way Coil works is you go to Coil's website and when you sign up, you um, give them your uh, credit card details and they will start a subscription. Um, they're, they're not taking them for general public yet, but they will do hopefully very soon. So they start a subscription and you pay a flat rate of $5 a month via your credit card to Coil. What that $5 a month gives you is basically all, all you can eat um, buffet of, of web monetization. Wherever you go to a website that accepts this web monetization system, it will make a small payment to them as you're on that site. So you don't have to worry about whether you're paying too much or too little. Um, it's, uh, you know, you pay $5 a month and Coil will take care of that and, 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 and pay pay the people. So how do they get paid? So the nice thing about this is that all the content producer has to do is include an extra little bit of JavaScript. Well, this is one way. There's two ways in which it can happen. But one of the ways is they put an extra little bit of JavaScript in their web page. Now, this is quite a common pattern. So this is my website here. And if you look at the source code for my website, I have included in there um, a block of HTML that defines um, this donation script from Coil. And in there, I set this thing called my payment pointer. And this is actually an ILP address. This is where I want the payment to go. So what this says is, um, using these scripts uh, here, then... Um, make a donation to this site uh, and I want it to go to this ILP address. Now this ILP address could be any ILP connector. Now as it happens, this is where the beauty of this starts to come in and, and the kind of, there was this lovely day in which basically all these parts started to come together a couple of weeks ago in which uh, Vitsa Vind, very talented guy who wrote the XRP tip bot realized that he could be a uh, ILP connector and anybody who has an account on the XRP tip bot could receive payment via ILP. And because anybody on Twitter or Reddit or Discord automatically can sign in to the XRP tip bot, this means that anybody on Twitter effectively can receive an ILP payment. If you look at this address here, you know, twitter.xrptipbot.com slash Hamato. Hamato is my um, Twitter username, a phonetic corruption of my surname, Hamilton. Nothing to do with my feet. Um, but this means that anybody can use it. So, you know, you, you could set one of these up to donate to, um, you know, wh whoever you wanted to. You know, they don't even have to be a user of the XRP Tipbot yet or even have anything to do with this. If you set up a site and you set that up to be, um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a, of a politically neutral person to say you want to send that to that's not gonna um, uh, 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 upset anybody. Um, but you know, say you want to send that to, uh, I don't know, Kofi Annan, right? Kofi Annan on Twitter. Um, if, if he's got a Twitter account, then you just put that down there and that will then send it to his account on the XRP tip bot. If he, is, he was to, at some point in time, go to the XRP tip bot's website and, and, and uh, click on uh, log in via Twitter, it would log him in and suddenly he would see that he's received some XRP and there'll be a balance there that's come in from any site that is paying to his account. And you'll see this, this ILP coils deposit. If we go down here, I can go down here, ILP, uh, coil, 
Um, and these are the ILP deposits. So every time somebody goes to my website that's got an, an ILP account, it pays me a little bit of money. Now, it pays in drops. Now, a drop is a millionth of an XRP. So as you can see here, uh, somebody came to my, my site and I got 0.001229 XRP. So, uh, you know, what's, what's that at the moment? Um, that is, what is it? What are we on at the moment? We're about 25 cents an XRP, something like that. You know, so this is uh, three thousandths, no, 0.3 thousandths of a cent. I received so a tiny amount but that was probably somebody that came to my site for a few seconds um, you know somebody who is there who is there longer or keep, keep coming back would pay more but this is the whole idea behind this system tiny 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 payments there's no way you could make a payment of a thousandth of a cent or a tenth of a thousandth of a cent via credit card because it costs you or it costs the bank or the credit card company or somebody 30 cents 10 cents, something like that, just to process that payment. So there's no way you could take a payment of a thousandth of a cent if it's going to cost you 30 cents to, to process it. It's fine to pay 30 cents when you're when you're buying something for ten dollars, or or you know, a couple of cents when you're buying, you know, a coffee for three dollars or whatever, but not when you're trying to make a payment for a thousandth of a cent, a ten thousandth of a cent. There's no way you could do that with conventional payment mechanisms. This is where ILP and COIL comes in. So these tiny, tiny little amounts, you can imagine they would add up. What would be a great use case for this? If we look at uh, COIL's website, Wikipedia, think about it. How many people here use Wikipedia? I would imagine everybody probably does. Um, they keep having donation drives and they keep asking for donations. Now, that's a bit of a pain. You've got to, you know, whatever, put in your credit card or whatever, somehow pay them. It's, a, it's an active thing you've got to do. What if when you went there, your web browser paid them automatically? You don't mind. You're paying, you know, fractions of a cent to do it. But if every visitor to Wikipedia did that, they would have no problem with funding. They would be funded. Same with the Internet Archive. The Internet Archive has got this massive archive of web pages going back, to, you know, 10 years, um, 20 years of, of the internet. And they're keeping these huge archives. These are costly to keep. So if everybody that went there paid, you know, just a fraction, then they would be funded and that'd be fantastic. That is what COIL is aiming for. Same thing with YouTube, video creators. I'm doing this video to you now. What if for every second you watch this video, I get paid, you know, a fraction of an XRP. Brilliant, you know, that would be, you know, that would be great. Um, that would be fantastic that that, uh, that, they, that they get, you know, these, these, these tiny little bits and pieces. Um, <laughs> Tom's just pointed out, bad example is Kofi Annan just passed away. Maybe that's why he came to mind. Um, oops, I tried to come up with somebody um, and I happened to come up with a dead person. Okay, um, you know, Tim Berners-Lee, there we go, you know, the inventor of, of um, the, the web, say we wanted to, you know, pay to him, we, we, could, we could do that easily with this. Um, I, ILP Deathmatch, in, Interledger Deathmatch, uh, Tom Kusner has just mentioned. So this was a, a kind of a really fun little experiment that they did to test Interledger Protocol and the Stream Protocol, and that was, they took, um, do you remember the game uh, Quake? Uh, one of the original kind of you know shoot 'em up type games, immersive games. You had Doom and Quake and things like that. So they took Quake and they made it ILP enabled. So that what happened was every time you got killed, you lost a little bit of money. Every time you killed somebody else, you got a little bit of money. And so what happened was so this was this didn't use Coil, but this did use ILP and Stream. And because it didn't use coil, coil the missing part that coil provides is the is the payment. You had to run um, a, a little daemon on your computer, a little server software on your computer called MoneyD, and that had access to your XRP wallet. And so MoneyD was then had access to your wallet and sent these small little payments via ILP. So every time you were killed and had to respawn, you had to pay a little bit of money. Um, and every time 
you killed somebody else, you got a little bit of money. And that was all handled transparently during the gameplay. You know, you didn't have to deal with any of it. It was just all dealt with automatically. But in order to do that, you had to run this um, uh, little demon, uh, Money D, and set it up and connect your wallet to it and all this lot. Coil takes care of that side of things for you, so you don't have to. You just pay $5 a month uh, to Coil, and they take care of it. And the, the point being is that they are they are paying on your behalf. If you use loads of stuff, great. You get good, you know, fantastic value out of your uh, your, your, your $5. Um but again, the great thing being is that's an ILP address. So if somebody were to put down a Bitcoin ILP address over, say, the Lightning Network, and there's a connector that connects Bitcoin to the ILP network, then they could get paid in Bitcoin. So the 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 owner of the web page can, can say, I want to be paid in whatever mechanism. If my bank account in the UK connected its ledger to ILP and issued bank account numbers on ILP, then instead of this uh, um, this address here being $twitter.xrptipbot slash hammer toe, it could be um, uh, $gbp.lloydsbank.com slash my bank account number and then every time the donation comes through, it gets converted from XRP via a gateway that connects XRP to pound sterling. And I, I could end up with like tiny little bits of pound sterling deposited into my bank account. Now, the chances are that wouldn't happen because, again, those payments, once they get to the to the bank, could be expensive to do. But there might be an intermediary that might batch them up and wait, and wait until it gets to five pounds and then make a payment to me. You know, you can do these things in, in, in ILP. You could set these sort of buffers that could aggregate it together and then make the payment at a slightly later date. So this this is this is brilliant because and this is going live now. And like I said, they're still waiting for um, the um, uh, early adopter code so that people can pay. But people can put this on their account now. And people people have already started to do this. Like I said, I've put it on there. I've started to receive payment now on my on my. Uh, my payment. So if somebody T4 Tips and Guides has said, would it be possible to integrate Coil into YouTube? Yes, they already they're already looking at that on their website. If you go to the Coil website, YouTube is one of the examples, and that would be brilliant because you've got these sort of fairly proprietary networks like Twitch that allow you to do this, or on YouTube, if I had enough subscribers, I could enable the um, super chat or whatever it's called and allow people to pay me uh, during the during the the show, and that would be great. But you know, it would be great to just have it automatically done. And that's what they're looking to do. And the way that would potentially work is you don't necessarily need the uh, the site to embed that, that JavaScript. There's another way which there's a plugin for the web browser. So there's a plugin for Chrome that's enabled. And that plugin, uh, if I've got a screenshot of it here somewhere. Um, oh, yeah. So uh, here's, here's, here's the plug-in. Here's a picture of the plug-in. So Stefan Thomas went to Tiffany Hayden's blog. She enabled it on there. And here you can see it's automatically saying Coil is donating. And there's this little you know, number here of XRP. And that will be going up automatically uh, as, as the site is, is, is visited. And you could just sit there on that site and that number would just be you know, increasing like a little, you know, sort of the little meter on a gas pump or a, you know, your electricity meter kind of as it's donating as you're there on the site. And so people have started to create plugins for things. So WordPress, here's a plugin that uh, uh, the DM Lab, um, uh, I'm not sure who they are, but they announced on Twitter that they'd created a plugin. So there's a, a WordPress plugin you can download if you use WordPress, which is a popular sort of site creation and blogging software. You can install this plugin and just say, OK, here's my payment pointer, and it will put that JavaScript in for you. But it's quite a... Quite a, quite a simple thing, so it makes it really easy, put it on any website, pretty much any technology, pretty much any browser can do it. I think there's a bit of a problem with Safari at the moment because Safari's um, a little bit behind on some of the standards. But soon, you know, your, your, you know, your phone will be doing it soon automatically, you know, the, the browser on there, and it won't matter hopefully soon whether it's an iPhone or a Samsung Android phone or whether you are in the UK or Europe or America or China or Australia or whether you want Bitcoin or XRP or whatever it will be universal 
and this is why I think this is massive and XRP is I think going to be a key little player in this because it is still one of the fastest ways to do these payments so even though you're paying coil say five dollars a month via credit card they are paying the end content providers via XRP and if the end content providers want Bitcoin then it'll still be XRP until the point at which it's converted to Bitcoin and that's when they that's when they get it um, so I, I think this is going to be a you know a, a big thing for the adoption of XRP and think about you know the number of websites out there doing this this could be bigger than some of the other use cases of XRP so you know in the end potentially it could be bigger than something like you know ripples X rapid because think about it if every single website on the internet started doing this um, it could be massive and uh, Tom Kusner has asked what about IOT Internet of Things and coil exactly so um, uh, with these streaming uh, protocols one of the great examples that uh, David Schwartz gives in one of his talks is imagine if my mobile phone was to be able to pay for Wi-Fi automatically wherever I am so at the moment if I get on a plane and I fly to Australia and I get out the plane and I turn on my phone oh there's a Wi-Fi network there and it's a local you know Telestra I think it is whoever it is is the you know a local provider in Australia and they go oh Wi-Fi well you could sign up for you know five dollars and get one gig of Wi-Fi access or whatever it might be you know you see them in airports and hotels well what if my phone could just say well Wi-Fi yeah sure I've got some money I'll pay for it and just pay for it automatically for you you wouldn't have to worry about credit cards you wouldn't have to worry about signing up um, you know it would remove that barrier and there's so many businesses that are not possible at the moment because there's a minimum spend requirement you know you have to pay five dollar five pound five euro whatever minimum because otherwise the payment cost is too high relative to the overall cost you know what if you had a system where you could pay for a book by page and as you're reading it it's paying and if you stop halfway well you don't pay for the rest of the book or um, you know so a oh, great example using ILP and, and this was a beer pump and uh, you know it's literally you're paying per milliliter of beer as you put your, your glass under it as it pulls and it could be self-service you walk up to the beer pump you put your glass in um, your phone or watch has, has connected via NFC to the beer pump and said hey ILP stream um, here's here's my here's the the payment detail and as you start pulling it goes well that's you know 322 milliliters of beer um, that will cost whatever and the payment is made you know before you've even let go of the pump the, the the payment is with the brewery you know that that's that's just that's just mind-blowing to me that I think that's just amazing um, so yeah I think this is this, this is fantastic uh, so W Boomins asked but is this still centralized via coil I assume ultimately be directly via the browser without coil in between uh, yes exactly it could be directly via the browser so the point that um, so yes a website could request the browser to pay and the browser would pay it directly and that could come from uh, your wallet say locally the uh, business bit the, the bit that coil adds in is one the point that you don't have to actually own any cryptocurrency you just pay via a a you know flat subscription fee but also they're taking the kind of risk that you know uh, on average five dollars is going to be enough to cover everybody so if you um, go to a load of websites then you know that it's still five dollars if you go to very little it's still five dollars so they're kind of taking that sort of risk on there and I think somebody worked out the rate they're paying that five dollars was I can't remember like eight hours of web pages per day or something you know it, it, it's it's a lot right um, it, it is a lot so it is it is centralized via coil on the basis of coil are a company that that allow you to pay via your credit card to them and they do this subscription but all of the underlying mechanisms are open so another company could come along and say rather than paying five dollars a month per flat fee we, we, we've got another way of doing it in that um, I don't know you you come and pick apples from our orchard and in return you get you know payment to web pages whatever it might be it, you know it could be you know we don't you know, we don't know yet but this is the point is that all the underlying mechanisms are open 
and and this kind of comes back to you know I've, I've mentioned a bit about XRP and about Ripple and about Coil. This is really, really, really the fundamental point that all of the stuff that Ripple are doing, that Coil are doing, is all building on top of open networks. So Ripple themselves, for example, with what they're trying to do with cross-border payments, Ripple are a centralized company. Ripple are working with banks and whatever, yada, yada, yada. But they are building on top of an open network, so anybody can come in. At the moment, if I want to send some money from here to Australia, I can't. I can't do that without using a bank, MoneyGram, a credit card company, PayPal, somebody, right? And they have to take their cut. But the whole idea with the XRP network is it's an open network so that anybody can participate on. Now, I can build other services on top, and that's what Ripple are doing. They are building a compliant payment gateway on top that meets the bank's demands, you know, speaks whatever protocols the banks need at either end to make them happy with their compliance and regulations that they need to do that you or I as an individual might not care about, but banks need to deal with. So Ripple are doing that, but on top of an open network. Coil are building a business model and providing convenience to the user on top of an open network. And that is why the XRP tip bot can be at one end and Coil can be at the other end. And the XRP tip bot and Coil have no relation to each other, no business relationship at all. There's no agreement between them, there's no passwords between them, there's nothing. All that's happened is the XRP tip bot has connected to ILP and Coil has connected to ILP. So you get this network effect. This is why I say that if, for example, I don't know, you know, my bank or PayPal or somebody else connected to ILP, then I could specify my ILP payment pointer, you know, that, that little bit of code in my website. I could put in there the details, you know, and it could be whatever. Um, paypal.com slash and my username at paypal and the payment would be made to paypal in whatever um, currency that paypal accepts or i accept via paypal so i'm in the uk i want pound sterling and there could be a gateway somewhere that sits between paypal and coil and translates between the two and 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 that's the the, the thing there's a network um let's see if i can find is there an ilp uh, diagram of the somebody had one um, a, a while back that had that showed what the current ILP network sort of looks like. No, I can't find it. Um, let's see if. <laughs> no. Well, here's here's a an, an sort of an illustrative diagram um, using interledger protocol, various things communicating together. Um, but it doesn't show. There was one that was a, an actual diagram that somebody created that showed the kind of ILP network and the various connectors that are that are, that are live on there. Um, and that was really interesting because you could see who was on the ILP network. In the same way that, you know. This video is coming to you from the UK, from my computer, to my local internet provider, to another provider, to another provider, and then turning up via your internet provider to your desktop. Your internet provider, my internet provider are not the same. They do not have any relationship, but because they both speak the common protocol um, IP, that means that my data can get to you and is routed over the network. The same is what ILP are doing for payments. You know, it doesn't matter who you're with, who I'm with, I can just say, send this value in this denomination um, to this end address, and it will work its way through the network and get there. Uh, so Stuart XRP, uh, so could call work for streaming movies on, say, Netflix, pay per minute. If you don't like the movie, you could have ended it without paying the entire fee. Exactly. Yep, Netflix, um, YouTube, whatever. Um, this This could be great. And another, oh yes, another example, of a key point of this. So we talk about monetizing web pages, and you say that, okay, you come to a web page and you could donate to it. Well, why might you want to do that? Well, the alternative model at the moment for monetizing web pages is predominantly advertising. You go to a website, it's covered in adverts. You know, you go to a, um, a, 
a website for um, news and that news will have um, you know other adverts on there or something kind of asking you for payment or it might be a paywall you know it, it, it might be that if we if we if we go into an article that it says at the bottom you know um, there you go for as little as a pound you could support us you know some some um, uh, some sites um, there's a there's a paywall before you can even get in so here we go subscribe now there we go so what if when you hit the Times website the web browser or sorry the website could automatically check and go yes this person is able to pay via web monetization which is able to do it's able to check and say can this person pay by web monetization it doesn't care how it's paying it could be via coil it could be via something else it doesn't matter all it has to say is okay are they are they paying via web monetization maybe it says are they going to pay a certain minimum amount maybe um, and if it does by the time the page is loaded there's no subscribe now there's no adverts instead you'll just let straight through adverts are not there there's no subscription box there's nothing uh, you know sort of saying um, you know if you want to read more um, you know get access sign up all of that could be gone it would still be there for those that are not web monetize enabled but if they are it could automatically detect it remove all of that hassle all of that friction and take the user straight to it I'd pay for that I'd pay five dollars a month for that easily right if I could then go to any website and, and know that I don't have to deal with that if I knew that if I went to Wikipedia's website then I'm automatically donating to keep this site running if I'm going to blog I'm contributing to the author if I'm going to YouTube I'm contributing to the uh, person doing the video you know if I go to um, a charity's website automatically donating to them brilliant I'd pay for that 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 would be great you know there's a lot of people that are saying well oh you're taking the free internet and you're charging money for it this goes against the whole purpose of the internet it should be free blah 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 it's not free you're paying you're paying via your eyeballs and adverts right you're paying via um, you know what do Facebook do they take your personal data they scrape it they they then sell it to advertisers um, they sell it possibly for political means there's a whole dark area that's gone in the last year or so um, you know where people's privacy is being eroded by companies that are taking this personal data and monetizing it and using it as a way of funding their their sites what if instead you could cut through that crap and say don't show me any websites. Don't sell my details. Da 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 da. Just I'm not going. You know, just take payment and there we go. I'd pay for that. Again, this is an alternative. This is not saying you do have to pay for it. Um, a website could decide to do that. A website could say, look, unless you're unless you're paying, you're not coming in. That's fine. That's entirely up to them. Um, but it gives them a way to 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 be monetized for this. And whether it's a case if they don't let you in, or they let you in quicker, or they give you some free stuff. Then, then that's up to them. Um, there we go. I think I've rambled on a fair bit now. Um, hopefully, that's given people an idea. Yeah, Beardson, exactly. If something is for free, you are the product. Um, that's 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 the point. If something's for free, you know, you're you're the product. You're, that's that they're selling you. They're selling your data. They're selling your 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 attention, your eyeballs. And it's just such a shady market and it's a pain and people hate it. And, you know, you go to a website and especially on a mobile and you scroll and it's like, shut that advert, get rid of that bit, da, 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 da. You know, let's just get rid of all of that. It would just make it so much easier. And like I said, it would give business models that don't even yet exist. So, yes, Beardson, you do some fantastic little cartoons, right? You know. The little cartoons you do, there's probably not enough there to say, you know, how would you monetize that as a cartoonist? You would probably have to get a, you know, a, a publishing deal with somebody or, or do enough of them to put them in a book and sell a book, you know, or, or whatever. Um, you know, I might not, you know, your cartoons are great, but I might not, you know, feel that's worth enough for me to get out my credit card and create an account and pay you directly, you know. Whereas if you can just pay you a little bit, well, that will support you. You can do more cartoons. That'd be fantastic. Um, so Tom's saying, Matt, do check out the Synapse experiment. I will do. I'll, I'll look at that as well. Um, there was a browser. Was it Brave, I think? There's there another browser that kind of had this built in. I think theirs was proprietary. I don't know. I haven't checked it out. 
Um, but Brave, the idea behind Brave was it was a security focused, privacy focused browser. And I think what they did is they stripped out the adverts before it got to you and stopped your personal data getting to the end site. Um, and in return, they charged you some money and they paid the site some money in, in return for, you know, st stealing their advertising revenue by removing the adverts. Um, and, and, and that's great. But as far as I'm aware, I think that was a sort of a proprietary system, whereas what we're talking about is an open system that could apply to anything. Um, so that will be great. Uh, Viking to a sorry to digress, did you use BitHomp for your paper wallet? Um, no, I don't think I did. Um, you can use you can use it. I I think I I'm I I'm a programmer. I used uh, Node.js and I wrote some code in there to um, generate it. It's a few lines of code in there. So uh, thank you everybody. And in TVDH, uh, appreciate what you're doing. Thank you very much. I like watching Premier League games via Sopcast. Others and hate the ads popping up. I don't mind paying via call to watch. Yeah, exactly. You know adverts. And you know, paper, paper second. You know, the the payment as the as the video is coming down, each frame of video that comes down, a payment goes up. Um, and 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 what's great about this as well? Sorry, another little thing before I go. It's not just people paying services, but it's services could pay other services. So, think about um, you're watching the video. You're paying the video provider. The video provider could be live paying who it's getting the video from, you know, originally, which might be another company that actually produced it or might be paying for the hosting fees directly. So one site could pay another site or one site could pay another service. So it's not just people paying services, but it's machines and services paying other machines and services as well. Like I said, your mobile phone paying for Wi-Fi on your behalf without you even sort of realizing um, it's doing that. You know, uh, think about where this goes with stuff like renewable energy, charging, electricity. Um, you know, you pay for a, a taxi, the taxi pays um, the nearest uh, charging station that happens to pay the person whose house it's on. Or, you know, all of these payments could happen automatically. And, and that then just, like I said, this just gets, you know, uh, further and further in there, which is which is which is really great. Um, so, yeah. And as Tom said, Tom Kushner says, just in time, fast and only as long as it's needed. That's the great thing. Remember, we're talking cryptocurrencies here. So we're talking settled payments in the milliseconds. It takes the XRP to arrive at my account. I can spend it. It's mine. It's not like, say, something like Visa or PayPal in which. I, you know, you make the payment, but I don't get the money for another three days or seven days. With Stripe, it's 10 days. You know, if I took monetization via Stripe for this video, you'd pay. You'd have the hassle of a credit card. I don't get the payment for 10 days. Right. So what if I want to then use that to then go and pay for, you know, something else I, I can't do. Whereas with, you know, cryptocurrencies, things like XRP, it's there instantly. So that's fantastic. Um, thank you very much. Any other questions, feel free to ask them in the, in the comments and, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, try and answer them there or grab me on Twitter. Um, and yeah, the usual sort of, uh, YouTube -y begging, subscribe, like, etc. means I can uh, do more things on the channel and, um, you'll also get notifications as well. If you subscribe, I do try to put these up as events. Normally it's not until the, 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 the day of the event, but I will try and put them up a bit further in advance and you can get reminders. And the great thing being is it'll deal with your time zone as well. Last week I screwed up the time on it, but um, you know it, normally it will say when it is and, and give you a reminder in your time as well. So that makes it a lot easier. So uh, thank you very much and uh, see you next week. Goodbye.